What's up YouTube, it's Rorette, back at it again with another video. In what is the greatest video on YouTube about the Gemini API, I show you how to create an automated buy, sell, and transfer process, and then also get the lowest fee of any cryptocurrency exchange, the 0.1% fee that is available on the Gemini API. Almost everyone who implements this strategy is not a professional coder and actually has very little programming experience. And so they have a lot of different questions about how to modify the scripts that I've posted out there on the internet to do what they want the scripts to do. And because they have little programming experience, they can get really nervous about executing this script for the first time, wondering, is it going to actually do what I expect it to do? And not wanting to deal with those real life consequences of moving around actual money from within their own Gemini accounts. In this video, I'm gonna be helping out all those people become more comfortable programming in general, and then specifically programming with this Gemini API strategy by connecting to what is called the Gemini API sandbox. A sandbox is basically a playground environment where you can test out in this case, different buy and sell scripts with the fake money that Gemini has loaded into the sandbox environment. So if you're nervous about using production scripts to move real money of yours around from within your Gemini exchange account, or if you just wanna play around and learn a little bit more about coding and better understand the Gemini API, I hope this video will be really helpful for you. Go down below and smash the like button for coding education and let's level up your brain. All right, guys, so this is Gemini.com, the normal Gemini.com that you would normally come to. But if you instead go to exchange.sandbox.gemini.com, you'll see that it doesn't look the same anymore. And there's a little note up at the top that says sandbox is for demonstration purposes only. To log into actual Gemini, click here, and that will send you back to, you know, real Gemini, exchange.gemini.com. But let's go back to the sandbox for now. So again, exchange.sandbox.gemini.com and all the links for these things will be down in the description as always. So now you're just going to log into the Gemini sandbox with the exact same credentials that you're using for normal Gemini, your regular Gemini exchange account, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And then additionally, the code from Authy, or if you're using whatever two-factor authentication is gonna be exactly the same as what it was for your original Gemini account. And it's actually been a while since I've set up my own Gemini sandbox from scratch and I actually can't create a new account from scratch because they link it to your phone number and I don't have two phones. But if you are having any trouble logging into the Gemini sandbox, just go ahead here and click on create new account. And then if you go through this process, you should be set up to use the sandbox exchange. But again, I think that that should come out of the box just from having your regular Gemini account set up. If you are having any problems getting into the sandbox exchange, definitely let me know down in the comments. And so you'll notice that this looks exactly the same basically as the regular Gemini exchange. The only difference is that you'll see that on this exchange I have about $300,000 of USD on the exchange and about 3,000 Bitcoin, which is a ton of money. And that's how you're telling basically that it's, you know, this is a sandbox exchange. None of this is real money. And then obviously the other way to tell is the big sandbox up here in the URL. And then if you go up to the notification bell up here, you'll see obviously large amount of USD, large amount of BTC, large amount of ETH, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Zcash. And you'll also notice that when you go click on trading pairs over here, that not every trading pair exists. It's really just the, you know, those five tokens. If you look, for example, for BAT, BTC, okay, that also exists, but there is no price for it. So you can't actually trade this on the sandbox exchange. Hopefully in the future, they can bring that functionality to the sandbox. But until then, what this is gonna be really useful for is anyone that's uncomfortable executing those scripts that we went over in the previous Gemini videos, I think this process of using this sandbox exchange is going to help you not trust what I'm saying, but actually verify it for yourself. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to log into console.aws.amazon.com and we're gonna come over to Lambda functions. And this is going to be sort of our test environment for executing these exchange sandbox scripts. So I'm gonna create a function up here. I'm going to author from scratch. You could call it sandbox environment environment or Gemini sandbox environment or something like that. And then I'm going to come down here from Node.js and I'm gonna turn this into Python 3.8. I'm gonna do x86.64. I'm gonna scroll down and you'll see that there is a create function button down here. So you're gonna click on that. So successfully created the function. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here and add a layer. And if you go to custom layers here, you're just going to add the regular Gemini layer that you're using for any other Gemini functions that are part of any of the videos that we've done here on this channel. So I'm gonna 
gonna select my Gemini layer here. I'm gonna select the version and then I'm gonna hit add. And again, if you don't have that layer, you can come over to this Gemini API sandbox examples link that I'm gonna have down in the description and you can just download your layer here. And then you're going to need to upload it first on Lambda layers, create a layer, upload your layer here. We've done this a bunch in a bunch of other videos, so I don't wanna waste your guys' time going over it again. And then you're going to add the layer to the function that we just created here, Gemini Sandbox YouTube demo in the way that we just you know added that layer 10 seconds ago. And then you're gonna come up to configuration and you're gonna change your timeout to 30 seconds. This is gonna make sure that you don't get any timeout errors and you should be good to go here. So now you can go back over to this Gemini API Sandbox examples link that I'm gonna have down in the description and you can copy this buy Bitcoin from Gemini function and you can delete the code that's already here and just paste the function that we have written from Notion. All right, so now we're gonna need a public API key and a private API key. And the public and private API keys are actually not the same as what's over on Gemini. You're gonna need sandbox specific API keys here. And so if we go back over to the sandbox and then we hit account and then settings, we'll click on account here and we'll go over to API. Once we're in API, we're gonna hit create API key, put in your two-factor authentication, then we'll create the API key as a primary scope and we'll hit next and call this uh, sandbox YouTube demo. Uh, you'll copy the entire API key here. You need account to be copied also in the public key. This is gonna be the public one. And so you'll go over to Lambda functions and you will paste it into public key. And then back on the sandbox, we're gonna take this secret and we're gonna paste it in as the private key. So now we're going to give it the fund management and trading permissions. We're not going to require a session heartbeat and we're going to acknowledge that we've copied and pasted the API key into a safe place and that you're not gonna be able to see this secret again. If you do ever lose your API keys or if they're not working correctly for some reason, you can just come back and regenerate new ones as part of this process. So we'll hit create API key here. We've got our sandbox YouTube demo. And so now if we go back to the Gemini exchange, we'll see that right now we have no open orders as of you know this moment. And so now if we come in here to the Gemini sandbox YouTube demo and we hit deploy to deploy the changes that we've just added our public key and our private key. Now AWS has the latest code, the public key and the private key. And so it should be able to make a connection down here on line 18 to the sandbox, right? So the only difference here on line 18 from the regular script is that instead of when we initiate our trader variable, which is basically our link between the code that we've written and the Gemini API, is that we're saying, take this public key, take this private key, but also set sandbox to true. So we're not operating in the regular Gemini exchange. We're now operating within the Gemini sandbox exchange. And so now if we hit test, scroll down here, we can name this Bitcoin sandbox buy, and we'll hit create, and then we'll hit test. And then here you'll see that the maker buy was executed and that there are you know variables here and it's giving you the data, the ID of the transaction, the symbol, the exchange. And so now if you go back over to the sandbox, you'll see that it has posted the order that we wanted to post there. And so this posted an order for 48,000. Let's now make a couple changes and sort of play around with the sandbox so that we can get an idea of, first of all, how the script works, and then also see that response in the sandbox. So let's say we wanted to set an order for a different execution price. We would just come over here and hit pound in front of execution price. You'll see that it turns the text gray. And so that's basically a comment. It's not gonna read that line anymore. And so now we can write execution price equals, and we'll call it quotes, we'll say 45,000.00. We'll hit deploy to get our changes up into AWS. And then we'll hit test. You'll see that the maker order executed. You'll come back over to sandbox. We waited a couple seconds there. And then we saw that the order showed up for $45,000, just like we wanted it to. And so you could do the same thing here. You could say, maybe this time I want to put an order in for $5,555.55, because I think that Bitcoin is going to drop really far and I want to get, you know, really great price execution. So you'll hit deploy again, you'll hit test. So we waited a couple seconds and there it is, 5,000, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We just put it in. And so then, you know, if the price fell to any of these things, these orders would fill, right? And you can see that over in completed orders. I have a bunch of previously completed orders that when the price falls, you know, they fill on the sandbox exchange. And again, this is fake money, right? I don't actually have $300,000 in my Gemini account. So let's delete this execution price and we'll bring back the original one. And now let's think, okay, we were making $20 orders. What happens if we make $2,000 orders? So let's hit deploy and let's hit test. So now if we go back to the sandbox, open orders, we'll see another order here for a little less than $2,000. And that's because we're paying 0.1% of that as a fee. And so if you just do the math here, 0.1 over 100 times 
times 2000, that's gonna be $2. And so that's why the order posted for 1998. So now, unfortunately, if we try to actually withdraw funds from our Gemini sandbox, just to even see if they would go through from the Gemini side, we're going to run into an issue where the sandbox actually doesn't allow deposits or withdrawals. You can see this here in the documentation. If you try to add an address, even a valid Bitcoin address to the address whitelist on your sandbox exchange, you can see Bitcoin, I'm gonna do demo, I'm gonna paste in an active Bitcoin address, I'm going to hit continue, I'm gonna re-enter the address, and it's going to, no matter what you enter here, tell you that this is not actually a valid Bitcoin address, even when you know for a fact that it is a valid Bitcoin address. So unfortunately, this is not going to help people who want to test their withdrawals, but what is actually going to help people be more confident in making their withdrawals using the Gemini API is if you do go into sign in here on just the normal Gemini exchange. And then if you go to account and then into your settings and then down on the left into approved addresses here, you're going to be able to add an address. And so now if we say, let's say that it's a Bitcoin address and we do demo withdrawal and we put in, let's put in an address that we know is not right. So I just randomly deleted four of those uh, keystrokes there. And so now if I copy this address and paste this address again, it's going to tell us that this is not a valid Bitcoin address. And so that is going to be your check to make sure that you are withdrawing to a valid address. And then when you're within your Gemini API, you're actually not going to be able to withdraw to any address that's not on this approved list of addresses. And so all you're going to do here is let's say I wanted to withdraw to Casa Mobile here, I would just click on this Bitcoin address that has already been verified to actually be a Bitcoin address. And then I'll come into the in this case, it wouldn't be the sandbox anymore, it would be the actual code, but I would just paste that Bitcoin address there. And then if you wanted to, let's say, withdraw a very small amount of Bitcoin, you could actually just go into this amount variable here. And let's say you only wanted to withdraw 0.0001 Bitcoin, which as of today is about $5. And there might be a minimum or something here. So you might need to withdraw like 0.0002 Bitcoin or something, but you could do it with this very small amount. And then, you know, you'll see that it has withdrawn to the address that you write down here. And that's going to be the way that you're going to have to test addresses because unfortunately the sandbox is actually limited in that, you know, it's not allowing you to do those deposits or those withdrawals, which is really unfortunate. However, you can still use the exchange to test whatever other sort of trading strategy you're trying to implement that maybe you don't want to test with real life funds. And you could even automate these trading strategies through CloudWatch and the Lambda functions as we have in previous Gemini API tutorials. And to sort of get a list of what are the functions that are available to me as someone that's using the Gemini API, I've left a link up here to the Gemini Python GitHub page. And so if you just come into Notion on the link that's gonna be in the description, and then you check out Gemini Python Git repo with available functions, it's going to bring you to the code that we're actually using to execute all these trades. And so if you scroll down here, you'll see, first of all, instructions on how to install this for yourself locally if you don't wanna be using AWS. It's basically just gonna be pip install Gemini Python if you do have a Python environment running on your local machine. And then here are going to be some of the public client methods and some of the private client methods. You can see there's stuff like making a new order, which is something that we take advantage of, canceling an order, giving the order number, canceling all orders, getting a status of an order, checking which active orders there are, getting a list of your past trades, getting balances for different tokens. And then again, down here, an example of the withdraw to address function that we're utilizing to actually make those withdrawals off the Gemini exchange. And so in this example, he's withdrawing ETH to this Ethereum address and then withdrawing 20 ETH. So again, this is a really low risk way to get started. If you are just uncomfortable with coding at all, you can come down here and play around with it all you want. You can maybe write a sell Bitcoin function and then copy the code that I have over in Notion. You just go up to coding projects and then the Gemini API, and then you could take whatever function that is written here if I don't already have it over in the sandbox URL link. And you could even maybe mess around with having multiple functions in here at the same time, right? So maybe you have a buy Bitcoin function and a sell Bitcoin function in the same script. And then maybe you're running the buy Bitcoin, you wanna buy $20 of Bitcoin and you wanna sell 
you know, $40 of Bitcoin. And you know that since the public key and the private key are both pointing to the sandbox exchange, that even if you forgot to write, you know, sandbox equals true here, you know that that order won't execute on your normal exchange because these public keys and private keys that we're passing in this function are both sandbox keys. But let's just show you what it would look like if we did everything correctly here. We'll write sandbox equals true here in our trader function so that we know that we're working within the sandbox. We'll deploy this code. And so then what we should be doing here, buying $20 of Bitcoin and then selling $40 of Bitcoin. So let's hit test and we'll head back over to our exchange. And so you'll see that we have a sell order up for about $40 of Bitcoin and we have another buy order up for about $20 of Bitcoin that were just posted right next to each other. And so you could do this and mess around with this however you want and truly build out whatever sort of trading strategy that you wanted to employ. So if you guys aren't coders, I hope you found this video really helpful. And I hope that it gives you the confidence to execute some of these scripts in real life in the actual production Gemini environment. If you guys did find the video valuable, please go down below and smash the like button so that YouTube shares this video with other people who are trying to learn a little bit more about programming in general, and then specifically how to use the Gemini API, and then set up automated trading strategies for themselves and their own specific use cases, not necessarily just the use cases that I've presented throughout these different Gemini API videos on the channel. If you guys did get stuck or if you need any help or if you have any questions about what we covered in this video, definitely leave a comment down below or DM me over on Twitter at Retri, which I'll leave the link to my Twitter in the description as well if you wanna reach out to me over there. If you do write some crazy script in the sandbox and you can't get it to work, it might be hard for me to help everyone debug their unique uh, use case here, but I will do my best. So definitely reach out to me and we'll try to work through it together. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.